Welcome to another episode of X-Ray University. This is the third of three parts where we're talking about the image resolution for X-Ray systems. The third part is where we put it all together. Part one, we dealt with a real X-Ray source and an ideal detector. Uh, on part two, we looked at image resolution with an ideal X-Ray source and a real detector. So now we're gonna bring all those equations together to the final uh, image resolution of an X-ray imaging system, right? So let's get into it. Uh, uh, part one, we talked about what, what happens when you have an ideal detector, and by ideal detector, we meant a detector with where the pixels are uh, really, really small, so zero size pixels, so we end up with infinite number of pixels on an X-ray detector, and we determine that the resolution in that case is equal to F, which is the uh, size of the focal spot size on the X-ray source times magnification minus one. So that the resolution, we want the resolution to be a small number because we define the resolution as the size of this penumbra here onto the detector. So the smaller the R, the better image quality is gonna be, the sharper the images are gonna be. On the other hand, when we have an ideal X-ray source with uh, where F is equal to zero, and when we have uh, a real detector that has pixels of a specific size, right, they're not zero uh, uh, size pixels, so we have a detector with a finite number of pixels, you end up with a resolution that's a function of P, and P is the size of each pixel divided by magnification. So the larger the magnification, right, the better the resolution is gonna be. Why? Because a larger representation of the sample is going to be uh, shown by a larger number of pixels. And the more pixels you have, the better resolution is gonna be. And the same way, the smaller the pixel size, the better the resolution is gonna be, right? Because the more, again, the more pixels you're gonna have to represent a specific size or a specific area of your sample. So all those things make sense. So let's finally bring it all together. That's what we've been waiting for for so long now, so I'm super excited we're here. Ideal detector, we have that resolution is equal to P, which is the pixel size divided by magnification. Ideal source, we're gonna have that uh, the resolution is equal to F, which is the uh, focal spot size on the source times magnification minus one. And put it all together, we add it all. Resolution is gonna be F mag minus one plus P divided by magnification. So what does that look like in a real system? Uh, so what we did here, we were showing you three results at the same time. Uh, in orange, you have uh, an ideal detector, right? Where F equals to mag minus one, which is that straight line that we've seen before. That represents a system where you have infinite pixels. On the other hand, in silver, we show you when you have an ideal X-ray source, right? Where resolution is driven by the size of the pixel and magnification. And that's, you know, the inverse plot that we've seen before, where the higher the magnification, the better the resolution, the smaller the number is, and the smallest resolution you can achieve is when you have magnification equal to one, which means that, that pixel size is indeed the resolution of the system. Now, when you put it all together, what we see is that and that's our blue line here. What we see is that for small mag, you know, for small magnification, the detector drives the resolution, right? As we increase magnification, our resolution gets better and better and better, right? Keeps getting better, right? Uh, because we follow this uh, gray curve here, gets better until, until the focal spot takes over. And then we are back on this guy, where magnification gets large enough that takes over and drives resolution up. So decreases the uh, image quality. 
So in this case, just so you guys, so you guys have the numbers, we have a focal spot of five microns with a pixel size of uh, 100 microns. Pretty cool, right? So here, uh, let's play a little bit more with the numbers so you can see different equations and different uh, impacts. This is a situation where we have a pixel size uh, where you know a detector with 100 micron pixels and uh, three different sources. Two micron uh, spot size, five micron spot size, and 15 micron spot size. And you can see the drastic difference. So this is 15, this is five, and this is two microns. Right? So re at the beginning, when you have low mag, like we saw before, like intuitively you already know this, if you've seen the previous two videos, and if you haven't, please go check them out. But if you've seen the two previous videos, intuitively you knew that with a low mag, it doesn't really matter what focal spot you have on a source because your, your sample is really close to the detector, right? And that's what you see here. As we're really close to the detector, low, mag is low enough, doesn't, the impact of this uh, focal spot is not as pronounced, but as we increase magnification, that's when you see the huge impact that the focal spot has on the image quality. So let's do the opposite. Let's now go ahead and uh, pick one uh, X-ray, uh, uh, the one focal spot for the X-ray source, and play with different pixel sizes, right? So uh, we have pixel size, uh, blue is 50 micron, orange is 100 micron, and um, uh, gray is 150 microns. Just like we saw before, and I love how these things all come together. Intuitively, the pixel size has a deep impact on low mag and not a major influence when you have high mag. Exactly what it shows here. The influence of pixel size shows up on the low mag, as you increase magnification, they converge toward each other and there's really not much a difference. So here's the final equation. R is equal to F. F is the focal spot size, 5 microns, 15 microns, 33 microns, half a micrometer, like for the nanofocal sources. Magnification is a function of how the distance between the sample and the X-ray source and the sample and the detector. P is the pixel size on your detector and magnification shows up again. And, you know, we discussed this in a previous video and Tony is gonna show us the link here where we talk about the quality of an X-ray image is a short blanket, right? You can improve in one area and then something else is gonna get worse. So magnification shows up in the denominator and the, uh, uh, and the numerator. So it's a straight line and an inverse function. And that's exactly what we see here. Depending where you're gonna be, uh, you have to pick specific features of the X-ray imaging system to optimize a specific application. There's no one answer fits all, right? That's why if you're doing LEDs and you need a low magnification because you wanna X-ray a bunch of LEDs in a panel at once, pixel size has more impact than necessarily the uh, spot size on the source because you're going to be working on low mag. Now, if you want to look at the wire bond of a specific LED or, or a wire bond of a specific uh, uh, bear dye, well, now you're going to be working a high mag, which means that the spot size of your source really, really matter. So I hope these three, three videos have been um, uh, uh, interesting and informative. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, please let us know. We'll be more than happy to address them uh, here in future videos. Thanks for watching. And uh, if you haven't, please uh, sign up for uh, uh, X-Ray University. I'll talk to you later. Bye.